Right, you guys, today we're taking a look at the Mixtile Blade 3. This is a stackable high performance single ball computer based on the Rockchip RK3588. It's equipped with an octa core 64 bit processor, maximum of 32 gigabytes of RAM, and 256 gigabytes of eMMC storage. So they've sent me the actual case, and there's also a aluminium uh, e spreader on the bottom to cool the unit down, as you can see here. So this is how it comes. Now on this side, we do have two ethernet ports. These are 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. And we also have two HDMI ports. One of them is a HDMI 2.1 output with up to 8K at 60 FPS. And the other one is a HDMI 2.0 input at 4K at 60 FPS. We also have two USB type C 3.2 uh, ports on here as well. So you can see this is a very compact mini computer. Now up on the very top, we do have that 30 pin GPIO layout. And we also have the U.2 uh, 12 volt DC four times PCI Express Gen 3 SATA connector there as well, right up on the very top lip of that uh, device. You've got your debug there and you also have the mini PCI Express PCI Gen 2 USB 2.0 on there. And also we have the micro SD uh, slot on there as well on that edge here right on this very edge here so a very nice compact little uh, single ball computer here now if you wanted to use this as a hpc cluster node you would need uh, the actual breakout boards for these to uh, use in that sort of topology but you can do it and you can purchase these uh, from their site but we're going to be putting this into a case today i'm going to take this bottom piece off and we'll put it into a case so you can see what it looks like in a case and again, it does come pre-installed with Ubuntu on here, and you can change that to uh, another particular type of uh, operating system if you wanted to. This is the actual device here, and you can see uh, some of the things that you can do with it. It does have that uh, high-performance uh, octa-core rock chip RK3588, which means you're going to be able to also play retro games and other stuff on here. It does come uh, pre-installed with the Ubuntu operating system and that can be changed as well. You can also boot to a micro SD card if you wanted to and there's loads of other options available with this uh, tiny little single ball computer. And you can see the board in more detail here uh, for the technical specifications and you can see that breakout board down on the bottom there so you can have a simple cluster on this as well. So I will be uh, putting this into a case and we will be adding in an extra tiny board here so we can add in an NVMe drive on this particular uh, device as well. Again, you can install Arbion and also Debian on here as well if you wanted to, as long as Ubuntu. Uh, I do like that uh, Arbion on here. It is a pretty nice little operating system. I would uh, like to get that installed on here at some point. But anyway, what we're going to do here is we're going to get the case out and what we're going to do is we're going to get this installed on here and I'll show you how quick and easy it is to set this up. So let me just quickly pull this case out and we can take a look at the case as well. Comes nicely packaged in here. This is the actual case. Got a LED light on here and also a power button here already pre-installed on here. And it is made of uh, aluminium, I think, this case. And uh, we can take a look at this inside. It, it's already pre-punched out here. So you just have to insert it and get it installed. So you can get access to the micro SD card slot here as well. And everything else if you wanted to go down this route and have it just as a uh, mini pc you could set this up like that again if you wanted to use it uh, via a daisy chain uh, topology type of thing you can do having it set up as a hbc cluster that would need a separate type of case you can see the fans are, are underneath this uh, panel part here there is a little tiny power cable here that we need to plug into the board when we slot it into there and there is also some other stuff in here it comes with all the accessories as well like all your screwdriver and uh, screws and things like that there is a little tiny riser board here we can put in a nvme drive into here as well to add more storage if that's what you need to do with your particular mini pc and they have all this stuff on their website so you can check all that out there is a little thermal pad on here to help dissipate heat and again, we do have everything in here that we're going to need. So let's go ahead and get this set up and get it installed into this little case. There is some simple instructions to follow along here as well if you have never worked with these single ball computers before. But they are pretty simple to use. And again, they're a great little project to get yourself stuck into. 
So what I'm going to need to do here first, this is the actual case itself. And what I'm going to need to do is remove the heatsink on this particular device here so I can put that into a case. Now, you don't have to put it into a case. You can leave it exactly as it is right here with this big, nice uh, aluminium heatsink on here to dissipate heat. Or you can use a case. It's entirely up to you. So to remove the bottom part, I'm just going to remove these screws here. There's four screws that you need to remove. So I'm just going to show you one screw here and then we'll move on to the next step and pull this apart. And you can see now this gives us access to the main board. And there you can see uh, the rock chip right there. That is the rock chip RK3588, a very decent processor on here. And it also has the Mali G610 uh, GPU on here, which is pretty decent as well. So it does come with 32 gigabytes already on the board here. So you do get 32 gigabytes of memory on here and also 256 gigabytes of storage. But if you want to add more storage, you can do. But this is the actual uh, part that needs to clip into the uh, board here. So it, this will be our power button. And I wanted to show you this part here. So all I need to do here is get this wired in and get this clipped onto the board. And this is pretty self-explanatory. It uh, mentions all this on the actual uh, installation card here. But I'll show you how it's done. It's pretty straightforward. So let me go ahead and it shows you on here that we need to slot this onto this little connector here. This is our PCI Express connector here. So I'm going to clip that on and now that's done. And again, we can now put on a drive onto uh, that board there, right there. It can be situated right there. So that would give us more storage as well. Or you can run the operating system on there depending on how you want to do it. You'd have to change that in the BIOS, of course. So again, what we're going to do now is we're going to put in uh, the rest of this into the actual case. Uh, there is our NVMe drive. I'm going to stick that on there as well. And you've probably all installed an NVMe drive at some point. Very simple and easy to do. You just slot it into the slot and screw that down with the screw that comes in the kit as well. So all I need to do now is screw this down to the main uh, little riser board here. Very simple and easy to do. Now, if you want to see uh, how you can flash the internal EMMC uh, storage on this to change the operating system, let me know in the comments uh, section below because there is not a lot of uh, content on this particular device. So if you do want to see a video on that, let me know and uh, I'll show you how to do it. It is pretty straightforward, uh, but I've got that now set up here. And what I need to do is now plug this cable into this connector here and then we can then slot this into the case. Now, this is a bit fiddly because it is a very short cable, but it's not that difficult once you uh, get it up to the actual case itself. I'm going to plug mine in like this. Not sure if this is the correct way to go about doing this, but I'm going to do it this way because it probably seems the easiest for me. And once that's done, we can just slot this into uh, situ. Now, just make sure that cable is not pinching or getting caught up anywhere on the actual case. And now we've lined this all up exactly how we like it we can now screw down the bottom panel and that'll also have that thermal pad on here now of course the fans are inside here as well and it's also going to dissipate heat through the actual bot pa bottom panel here that does have a nice pad on here which is going to cool down this chip so you don't need a uh, thermal paste or anything like that in this particular build this has its own thermal pad on here and again you can change that thermal pad to something a bit more substantial if you wanted to so i'm just going to make sure i remove that little blue connector here this is our power button here we have this all lined up and uh, what we're going to do next is screw this board down make sure everything's lined up exactly how it should be and what we'll do is remove that little blue sticker on the thermal pad and put this down and we can screw down the actual board first. Not going to show you every screw, but I'll just quickly show you one screw here. I'm using my own screwdriver because the one they supply is very small, but it will suffice. But I prefer to use my own screwdriver. Next, we need to remove this little blue sticker here. And once you've done that, you can then stick this down onto the actual uh, top of the chip here. Now, it only goes in one way, so make sure you're getting this the right way there's a little groove there to line up on top here and once we've got this lined up that will sit straight onto the actual chip itself now it's already pre-installed so you don't have to worry uh, the actual thermal pad so it's in the perfect location and we just need to screw in the actual screws now into uh, the board here and this will screw this down to hold it into position so that's now done and i need to just screw these down and once these are screwed in 
we can then put in the anti-slip rubber feet on the bottom. It's nice to see that they've actually included these because some uh, case manufacturers don't and it ends up uh, scratching your worktop. So make sure that you put these on and they just sit inside these little uh, indentations here and they've got their little sticky pads on the bottom. So once you're happy, uh, if you're going to gain access to this again, then obviously you would need to remove these pads to gain access to the screws. And that's straightforward enough just to pull these off. They do retain their stickiness for quite a while. And once you've finished that, you can boot your device up for the very first time. It does come pre-installed with Ubuntu on here, but you can change that to whatever you like, or you can uh, change it and boot to a micro SD card or even an NVMe, whatever you want to boot to, you can do if you've set it up in a mini PC. Again, if you're using this for a cluster node, then obviously this is going to be a completely different uh, video because obviously we've just put this into a case. But you've got uh, Linux already installed here. Great way to learn Linux as well. If you want to see more on this little uh, single wall computer, let me know in the comment section below what you want to see, and I'll do my best to make those videos for you. If it gets uh, plenty of interest, I'll make more on these sort of videos. If not, then obviously you know what the drill is. But anyway, with that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I will leave all the links information in the video description for you. I hope you're having a lovely weekend and I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Thanks again for watching and thanks for your continued support. Bye for now.